warning, the following show will spoil the hell out of George R.R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire books and the TV show A Game of Thrones. Also, you're probably going to find a fuck ton of bad language. The explicit tag is there for a reason. Death and boobies, 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 death and boobies. Hello and welcome back to the Ironwood Network Book Club. I'm your host, Septa Ironwood, and with me, as always, is Maester Ironwood. How are you tonight? Septa, we're into a new book. We are. All the way into A Feast for Crows now. Yep. Book four. It's official. We've started it. We have. We have. It's the prologue. We got the prologue. Yep. I love this prologue. It was very interesting. There's I couldn't... so much going on and so many little things. Yeah, lots of little things, but I'm not sure I can, I see the relevance of it. Well, you know, we'll get there. Yeah. I mean, it's things that haven't happened yet. Right. That, well, they have happened yet, but they're still going to happen. Right. Well, we'll see what's going on, but. Okay. Yeah, we're here. We're in the prologue, which means we don't have a regular character. We just right. have, we have a, a one-time POV. His name is Pate. His name is Pate. Yeah. <coughs> Pate is an acolyte. At the uh, Citadel. Acolyte means... Training to become a maester. But he he's, well, he still has what he calls a pink neck. He doesn't have any of his chains. No chains after five years. No chains. No and links. one of his friends has been there a year and already has three. Yes, Alaris. Yep. Yes. Alaris the Sphinx is there for a single year and has three links already. So, obviously he... The Sphinx has links... Yes, obviously he is better at maestering right. than Pate is. So, but, all right, so let's talk about what happens. Yes. Let's get a little synopsis, and then we'll get a... Actually, no, we'll do a haiku, and then we'll do a synopsis. Yes, I was going to say, we'll we're missing a, we'll something. we'll do a breakdown. Okay. All Apologize right, so for the sniffles. It's that season. It is. Oh, oh okay. Couldn't read my own writing for a second. Bad. Hmm. Well, you know... <clears throat> Welcome to Old Town, home of Piggy Pate Gamgee. You'll see why later, but not for long. Piggy Pate Gamgee? Yep, Piggy, because they call him Piggy. Yeah. Pate Gamgee. I'll explain Gamgee. Okay. I'm sure you can figure out who... Samwise I'm, Gamgee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you figure out why? No. Who is Pate fawning all over at the bar? Rosie. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, last line, but not for too long. No. Because he's not... Lo because as every POV in a prologue or epilogue discovers, they are not long for this world. No, they are not. All right, so... Who died in the epilogue of the last book? I already can't remember. There wasn't an epilogue. Oh, yes, there was. Merit Frey. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Merit Frey. All right, so let's get a quick synopsis. Yes. Pate is an acolyte at the Citadel. Yes. Who... Nobody really likes, but they don't dislike. Like, one person dislikes him. The other people are just kind of, like, indifferent to him. He's quiet and broody. Uh, they go to a bar that's been open for 600 years every day. It's yeah. It's pretty fucking impressive, actually. Yeah. The Quillen Tankard, I believe it's called. Yes. Which Something is a great like name. Yeah. A great name for a bar, I think, in a fantasy series. Yeah. Um, they are there tonight. Drinking as usual. Yep. Um, the, his friend, Alaris the Sphinx, is putting on an archery show. Yep. Shooting apples with arrows. Moving apples. Yep. With arrows. That um, his other friend, so it's with an M. Yeah. Whatever. Is Not important. Them. Not important. Yeah. He's throwing. Uh, we get a little bit of uh, insight into some of the Archmaesters through their discussions. And we learn that Pate is there because... Rosie, the 15-year-old virgin daughter of the head barmaid, is basically for sale for a gold dragon. Yes. And Pate has found an alchemist who will trade him a gold dragon for a stolen key from the Citadel. Essentially a skeleton key that opens everything. Mm, yeah. Mm. So Pate has decided that he needs a little of that sweet, sweet untouched poontang so badly that he will steal this key and sell it for that gold dragon. And then him and Rosie will run away together. So he meets up with his alchemist after he leaves the bar and he's on his own. Yep. He stops to take a piss. And uh, the alchemist gives him his gold coin. 
He goes to taste test it, as you do with gold, to make sure you can, because it's supposed to be soft. Right. And is poisoned and dies. And the alchemist takes the key and heads off in to do we have no idea what with that key. Right. So we'll see. We will. There are, I have some thoughts on what they might be doing with it. Right. Obviously, they want to get some information of right. some sort. Right. Or something within the Citadel. And there are a couple options, I think, that could be, uh, could be interesting for things that they might want. Well, there's a lot of stuff at the Citadel. Yeah. It's the biggest so. library. Yes. So uh, all the rarest books are there. And the histories are kept there, too. Mm-hmm. And so that is the synopsis. So let's get into the whole thing. Yes. All right. So we start off with and, in Pate's mind. Yep. Um, the first person we're really introduced to is Alaris. Yes. We see Alaris um, shooting arrows that their friend is throwing. Yeah. With a bow and arrow. Yep. Now. They're all at the bar. Yeah, outside, outside on the patio. Outside drinking. Yeah. Yep. It's late at night. Yep. Late, late at night. Um, now, there is a lot of people who think that this Alaris is really somebody else. So you have to be a male to go to the Citadel. Yes. But there are a lot of people who think that Alaris is not a male. Because why, Septa? Because if you spell the name backwards, yeah. it spells Sorella. Sorella, as in Which is Sorella. the fourth daughter of the Red Viper. Yes, one of the Sand Snakes. Yes. Who loves Old Town, mm -hmm. and she's a pro at being an archer. Yep, and uh, Oberyn went to the Citadel yep. for a while and earned some links. Yep. And there's also one other bit of symbolism that I think really kind of finishes off the, is Alaris really Sorella? What's that? So do you know what the sigil for the Martell family is? Let me guess, is it a sphinx? No. Then I have no idea. So their sigil is a red sun being pierced by a golden spear. Okay. So Alaris is shooting red apples, yeah. red spheres, with, and I quote, a yard-long shaft of golden wood fletched with scarlet feathers. She's shooting red spheres with golden spears. I like that. <laughs> I do like that. Well, he. He. Yes. Literally giving us the yeah. Martell sigil in the activity that Alaris is engaged in. That's smart. I like that. So I found that interesting. That, that I, I read that chat, that line. I'm like, what is, because I knew, I knew, I wanted to make sure the colors. Right. Of the Martell's banner. Right. Because I wasn't sure if it was an orange sun or a red sun. It's right. red. It was Scarlet Red Sun. Huh. So. I would not have caught that. Yeah. So That is cool. Yep. Alaris is literally shooting the Martell sigil. Huh. Great that she's not really a Martell, but. She's a Martell daughter. She's a Martell daughter. Yeah. Right. She's Oberyn's daughter. So. All of Oberyn's daughters are bastards. Yes. So. Technically speaking. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So yeah, so that was uh, that was pretty interesting. And this is also the character who has uh, generated three links within the time of a, a year being there. Yes. Yep. So quick learner. Very quick. Whereas compared to Pate, he has tried twice to get two two times to get two different and failed both. links and failed both. Yeah. Which um, one is one of the things that we learn about Pate as well as about one of the Archmaesters, which I guess we can jump right into here. So. Um, he thought that uh, he could get a the Black Link from Arch Archmaester Walgrave for Ravenry. Yep. However, this is not... the guy he's basically squiring right now, right? Essentially, he's his yeah. accolade, right? Um, but apparently, according to Pate, uh, Archmaester Walgrave has grown too senile to be able to hand out links. That's then why would they put him with someone? Because he chose to go there. He chose to go work with Walgrave. Right, but it, he w he wouldn't have if he had known that Walgrave couldn't give him a link. Right. Because apparently they don't really care about the Acolytes. Right. They should, though. Why? Because the Acolytes are going to replace them one day. Do you think that they care? Nope. It's not going to affect them. You know what well, I mean? Well, if the Acolytes don't know what they need to know... But here's the thing, right? So apparently this Archmaester Walgrave is so senile... That he can't remember people. 
and therefore is too senile to hand out links. Right. However, we also learn about Archmaester Walgrave in this chapter that he is so with it that he knows every single raven at the Citadel by name. But he doesn't know people by name. Supposedly, he's too senile to be able to give out links, but his mind is sharp enough that he knows every raven by name. Well, there are p cases of people with, like, dementia and Alzheimer's that they can recall, like, perfect memories and stuff, sure, but they can't, like they can't connect to, like, faces to people. Yeah, I think it's more of... Remember how we talked about how Maester Pycelle is playing himself to be more feeble than he really yeah. is? I think Archmaester Walgrave is, too. He's pretending not to know who people are, so yeah, he's he doesn't have to give out. he's pretending to be out. more feeble. I think... Because I think he wants people to underestimate him. Mm, like, like this guy is? Right, exactly. Because Which I wonder, then, if the... If um, the person who's replacing Pate is assuming that Walgrave is this person who can't... Is totally not with it. Right. But then Walgrave is actually going to be with it enough to, like, suss them out. Right. Because they're not expecting him to be of, like, sound mind. Interesting. When in reality, he might actually be. Interesting. So, I wonder if that's what we're setting up with that. <coughs> um, Excuse the me. other Archmaester we learn about is Archmaester... Is it Marwyn? Yeah, there's like three or four of them. Yeah, well, this is the other one we learn a, yeah. a bit about. Archmaester yeah. Marwyn, who spent some time in Essos and has glass candles. Yes. One green, three obsidian. Yep. Yeah. Dragon glass candles. Yes. And, and Lucky or, or uh, Lazy Leo swears he saw one of them burning. Which they can't be lit. Unless you use magic, but according to the Citadel, magic doesn't exist. Because the dragons are gone. But Lazy Leo said he knows he saw one lit. But you don't see them unless you're down. And, and this is what something that Alaris said was mm -hmm. you can't see the candles unless you're going down for your vigil. Right, because you are placed in... Well, apparently, apparently he, Mar Archmaester Marwyn has one in his chamber. Right. Because Lazy Leo says the mage has one in his chamber. Right. So, apparently he... But yes, the uh, the final test, apparently, of a maester is to spend the night in a dark room with a glass candle. And if you can get it to light, then you have light. If you can't, then you don't. And you just have to suffer through the dark for the night. Well, then why do some people just try and go to sleep without trying to light it? Because they don't believe in magic. But they can still become a maester the next day if they haven't lit it? Yeah. It's all about the contemplation of... Right, they, I mean, they explain that in the chapter. It's all right. about contemplating, you know, the futility of attempting certain things right. and that sort of stuff. So. so if you try and fail, you fail. But if you don't try, right, then you pass. Yeah. Interesting. <coughs> and that's kind of like how they spend their final night. Kind of like a night, like their final night before they're knighted. They have to spend it standing watch at a sept. For 24 hours or right. something like that, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, you know. Interesting. Just like the last thing you have to do. Yeah. Kind of thing. Same idea. These glass candles are really cool, though. We don't learn that much about them yet. Right. But they're actually really cool. So apparently, do you want to know or do you want to learn it as Learn it as I go. Okay. All right. They're just really cool. Okay. They do interesting things. Apparently not blowing the wind. <laughs> well, if you can't get it to light, then... Well, no, because Lazy Leo said that... Even with the wind blowing, it didn't flicker. Mm hmm So. Yeah, lazy but Leo. Lazy Leo seems a bit of a know-it-all jackass because he's a uh, highborn. Well, he's a Tyrell. Yes. He's a... Uh, Mace is his cousin. Yep, Mace's cousin because his... And his father is basically in charge of Old Town. Yeah, because his... Lazy Leo's father is Mace's brother? Um, yes. No. Cousin. Cousin. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, he's kind of a dude. Yeah. Lazy Leo. He does give us a great little paragraph, though. Yeah. When he comes into the picture. I don't like him. So He's a pompous He kind of shows up in the middle of the chapter. Yeah. And at, by this point in the chapter, really all we've gotten of what's going on is Pay is waiting lusting for over this rosy girl. Yep. And he's waiting for somebody. And waiting for somebody who promised him a gold dragon. Yep. And he his friends just happened to be there. Yeah. So he, he thought it would be in poor taste to uh, not, sit with, not sit with them. Yeah. Yep. So Alaris is shooting apples this whole time. Yeah. Um, when Lazy Leo shows up, he is the one who just doesn't like anybody. 
He is, he's the bully, essentially. Yeah, he's the bully, he's the drunk rich kid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but he does give us a great line, which I love. Dragons and darker things, said Leo. <clears throat> the gray sheep have closed their eyes, but the mastiff, Archmaester Marwyn, yep. sees the truth. Old powers waken, shadows stir. An age of wonder and terror will soon be upon us. An age for gods and heroes. Gods and heroes, huh? Yeah. An Age of Heroes. Yeah. The Age of Heroes. Yeah. From ancient times. So we set for a new Age of yeah. Heroes. Well, we the chapter did start with them talking about, you know, the stories they're hearing from the sailors about the dragons mm -hmm. that have awoken. Yeah. And that's basically how the whole chapter had started. Right. Was them arguing over whether it was true or not. Yep. And Leo's like, oh, yeah, of course it's true. Yeah. So he's got to put his two cents in. Mm-hmm. I mean, he seems like the most informed because, according to the story that I've been reading, he's spot on. Right. <laughs> so... <laughs> well, Daddy probably tells him things he probably shouldn't be telling. Right. I do like what he calls the maesters. Mastiff? So we, no. That one maester calls him Mastiff. Right. The gray sheep have closed their eyes. Because they're not white and they're not black? They're, no, they're not the gray. They wear the gray... Yeah. Outfits sheep. and their sheep, right? So we've heard them called gray rats. That's yeah. what Walter Frey calls them. Yes, but he's calling them gray sheep, as in they're blindly being led. Well, I would assume that's what most maesters are, but they don't think they're being blindly led. Right, which is why they're called sheep. Right, just like you know, people call people sheeple. Yeah, same idea. So I love that the gray sheep, not the gray rats. Yeah, I think that's kind of cool. So who are they following, though? Blindly following the. Most like, of the Archmaesters, right? Who are telling them magic doesn't exist, dragons aren't real in the world, none of this is true. Except we saw with Daenerys that magic has awoken now that the dragons have been born. Right, which is why like, Lazy Leo is calling them sheep, because they are blindly being led astray. Right. Yeah, so we know the truth. We know magic is bad. Is that also why they don't offer a Valerian Steel link anymore? Because the magic hasn't been there? It's entirely possible. Although, um, what's his name? Uh, Winterfell's Maester. Maester he... Aemon has one. Maester Aemon has it. Yeah, but um, so does. Uh... But he was alive at the time of the dragons, so no, wasn't he? No, dragons were dead long, long by then. Dragons have been dead for about two hundred years. Oh, that's right. But if he shows that he knows how to like do even without the magic, if he knows how to go through the process, right. exactly, then, yeah, then you can still get. But your... if the if the archmaesters don't believe in it, then they're not going to teach it. Right. So. Well, and even uh, Maester Lewin told us that, you know, it was frowned upon to study it at the Citadel. You could do it, but it was right. frowned upon. Right. And Maester Lewin didn't they, Then they send you to out-of-the-way shitty places. Yeah. Like the wall. Yeah. <laughs> but he chose to go to the wall. Right. So. He chose. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. So, the, the action really happens at when the, uh, everybody leaves. Yeah. And Pate is walking back through the marketplace. Yeah. On his own. He's mad that this... Guy didn't show up. And this guy calls himself the... Alchemist. Yes. Tells, tells him he can turn iron into gold, which technically is true. Right. So uh, as he's walking, the alchemist pops up on him. Yes. And tells him, I have your coin. Did you bring what I asked you to bring? Yes. And what he asked him to bring was this... Skeleton key that from was the hidden under the Archmaester's bed in yes. a box with other memor memorabilia. Yes. Stuff. Yep. Yep. And apparently, this is an old iron key that will open any door in the city. It's a skeleton key. That's not a good thing to hand over for to one somebody. piece for one right. piece of gold. Yeah. I mean, I get that money is not something that the acolytes come across often because they're not Leo. exactly like working for money. Right, unless you're lazy Leo. Yeah. Right, you but, come from money. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah. I would think something like that would be worth more than one gold coin. Yeah. Seems kind of dangerous to give to just to be handing out willy-nilly, but I guess pussy yeah. makes men do strange things. Mmm. So, you know. And that's what he really wants. He doesn't care about the gold piece. No. All he wants is to fuck Rosie and yep. kidnap her and take yep. her away. Which, by the way, Lazy Leo said, let me tell you what, I'll buy her for a dragon, and then I'll fuck her, and that way the price will go down for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which was kind of funny. Sounds like something a cocksure kid would say. That kid's but, definitely cocksure. Yep. Yeah, so, Lazy Leo, or no, Pate, Pate, hands over the key and gets his gold coin. 
Sorry, I thought I turned that off. And um, goes to bite it. He bites it to make sure it's real gold, and but it is. He's not even sure because he doesn't know what gold tastes right. like. It seems like something you're supposed to do. And should, well, it's not about what it tastes like. It's, it's about can you make an dense. indentation in it with right. your teeth because gold is soft. Right. But if someone else has already done that, then you'd see the indentation. Well, you just pick a different spot. Right. And then do it yourself. But either way, he goes to, he do, he bites it, which is his fatal mistake. Yeah. Because he becomes almost immediately violently. Yes. And dies. <laughs> yeah. Goes face first right into the cobblestones. Yeah. And he's done. Yep. And there's now a new pate. You think. I do. So I am... All right, so let's talk about this. The alchemist? Yes. Let's talk about the alchemist. Okay. Uh, Just an ordinary looking guy. Yeah, I am 100% certain that this is a faceless... Okay. Are you? I would like to assume so. Okay. You think it's a different faceless man than I think. Yes. So why don't you tell everybody who you think this is? I think it's Serio Pharrell. Serio Pharrell. All right. Why Serio Pharrell? Just because they said dark curly hair. Mm -hmm. And that I was thinking like Serio Pharrell. So. Okay. I'm pretty certain it's Jack and Hagar. It could be a completely different. It could be. Man. They could both be the same person. They could absolutely be the we same really person. We really don't know. So they could literally be the same person. In which case, it could be all three at the same right. time. But we're both pretty sure it's a faceless man. Yes, absolutely. Because he says, I am no one. Yep, absolutely, yes. I did catch that. Yeah, his words are, he asks him who he is, and he says, a stranger, no one, truly. Yeah. It's his only response. Yeah. So, yeah, he's definitely a faceless man. Yes. Now, here is the question. What the fuck is in the Citadel that now that dragons are back... The faceless men want to get their hands on. The candles? So there's a couple possibilities. Candles are definitely one of the possibilities. Because they have certain abilities that would come in handy. Mm -hmm. Which you don't know yet. Right. Think of them as potentially like palantir. Well, I don't know what that means. So I can look it up. You know what the palantir are? Nope. Sauron had one. Oh, okay. Gandalf touched it and yep. caught a glimpse of the eye of Sauron. Yep. Okay. So think of them along the lines of Palantir. In fact, I think that that's probably where George got the idea from that. Okay. With the Palantir. <laughs> um, another possibility is, if you remember all the way back in book one, when Tyrion was reading in uh, Winterfell's... Library. Library. He mentioned a, like the most detailed book on the history of dragons that you could only find, find in it one in place. Town. You could only find it in the locked vault library of the Citadel. That would really be stretching out your um, little clues there, George. Which George does. Yeah. George has no problem doing that. No, none. And when you combine the fact that it's the faceless men, dragons are now back, <coughs> and they're looking for something locked within the Citadel that they need. They're willing to kill an innocent person to get the key to. Well, he's not that innocent if he's stolen before. He stole a key. Well... He said he does. He said he's not a thief. I don't think he, he has stolen. He says before. he is a thief. Well, he says that at that right. He says, "I guess I am a thief because I stole this key." He hasn't. Well, doesn't one of the other maesters have accused him of stealing something. Accused him of stealing the key. Oh, so they know he took the key. They know somebody took the key. Right. And one of the maesters accused him. But how would they know the key is missing if the other maester didn't even remember where he put it? <sighs> Who knows. Maybe he's not as senile as they say he is. Maybe he's not as senile as he says he, as they Because can... how else would they know that the key's been stolen? Mm, how else would they indeed? Right. This Maester Walgrave is an interesting cat, I think. And I'd like to learn more about him when Sam gets to the Citadel. Yeah. Yeah. And Pate, too. See who Pate might be. Mm, maybe Sam and Pate will become friends. Ooh, might not work out of the world for Sammy Sam. Maybe not. Given who Pate is. Right. But anyway. Yeah. So I'm under the I'm under the impression that the faceless men want either that book, which is all the information you could possibly need about how to kill dragons, or the candles, or one or more of the candles. Right. That's I'm fairly certain that that's what they want. Well, if the <coughs> maesters are smart, they don't have all the candles in the same place. Well, they certainly don't, right? Because the one is at least like all the way at the bottom, because that's where 
initiates go to spend their last night. They're well, maybe away with it in a vault. Maybe they just put it there for the the initiation. Well, we know at the very least that the one maester has one in his room. Right. So I'm assuming the other ones are elsewhere. Right. So there's three black ones and one green. Right. Right. Yeah. So, but yeah. So those are the two things I can think of. Yeah. That somebody would be interested in stealing. I'm trying to figure out what the relevance of the colors are. Yeah, I don't really know. I think it might just be. Um, just because we, we learned, like, two chapters ago that, like, obsidian comes in, like, all these different colors. Right. Or is it possible that, like, the one green one controls, like, the four, like, the other three are kind of, like... Well, that's what I was thinking. If, like, the three black ones, like, represent the three dragons and the green ones, like, Daenerys kind of thing? That, or I was thinking the other possibility would be, like, these four are, like, a set. A matched set. Right. And so the... Like, say, so what I would think would be the green, so, like, the three black ones could each communicate with the green one. Right. And the green one could communicate with each of the three black ones. Right. But the black ones can't, can't communicate, communicate with, with each, each other. other. Right. It's a way to, like, keep your your cells separate. You know, right. Like, you have the phone number of your handler, but not of your handler's other cells. Right. So I don't know if that's how it works or what, but I think that, that, I think that they're kind of like a, a set. That would be used together in huh. some way. Or maybe like black ones are normal because black obsidian is the most common. But then green ones maybe have more power. Right. Because they're less common or something. Who knows? Right. Not exactly sure yet. But hopefully we'll find out. Right. But that is the prologue. That is it. Yep. I do like this prologue. We get a lot of cool stuff going on. A lot, a lot more of, than I thought. A lot of intrigue. A lot of, why is this person there? What the fuck are they doing? What's going on? Yeah. So that's cool. Um, our next chapter is The Prophet. Yes. The Prophet. So I think that's it on Ironborn? It is. Yes. It's Aaron Dampair. Or Damfair. Damfair. I call him Dampair because that's how it's supposed <laughs> to be pronounced. It's Dampair. <laughs> so yes, that is our next chapter is The Prophet. We need to give this chapter a name, though. It needs a title. Do you have any ideas set there? The Alchemist. Good book. Oh, yeah. The Alchemist is a good book. Um, All for Gold. All for Gold. Okay. I had three options. Okay. Give me them. All right. So, first one. I think I'm going to say the best one, I think, for last. Okay. So, I have The Price of Love. Or Sex. Or whatever. Okay. I have the gold, golden kiss. Okay. And then I have fool's gold. I like fool's gold. Exactly. I, I, yeah, third one was the best. Yeah. Saved it for fool's last. Fool's gold. Fool's gold it is. I love it. All right. Like I said, our next chapter is the prophet. Chapter one. Chapter one. S Feast for crows. Yes. Good You're going to say storm of swords. Swords of storms. <laughs> Swords and storms. We are done with that. We are into Feast for Crows. Yep. Uh, let's thank all the listeners. You guys are fucking amazing. You're awesome. You're super great. Rad. Yes. Even. Thank you, guys. Bitchin'. Now that's going a bit far. We do the bitchin'. <laughs> I don't know. Bitchin' back in the 90s was a... That's cool, man. That's bitchin'. Totally bitchin'. Before my time, dude. You were born in 1990. Yeah, so? You guys claim to be children of the 90s. We were 90s kids. Not 90s kids if you don't remember the 90s. <laughs> I People remember born the, in the late 80s. 90s. People born in the 80s are the 90s kids. I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> I Like the one moron brilliant. you guys all share his crap on Facebook who's like, People born between 85 and 95. Are oh, the... are you talking about that damn tweet yeah. thing? That was Stephanie and she's... I know. Two years younger than me. She's not a 90s kid. No. I'm a 90s kid. And I was born in 1981. Because I grew yeah, up in yeah. the 90s. I grew up in the 2000s. That's why that's my favorite era for music. Right. Which really sucks because most of the music then was shitty as fuck. No. Shitty as fuck. Mm -mm. 90s music was way better. Just saying. Okay. The only thing that was better than... You guys had mbop. That's not that great. Uh, I did not have mbop. <laughs> That's a 90s music. You music. guys had whatever the fuck today's hip-hop is because it started in the early 2000s. I don't, I don't even listen to today's hip-hop. By the way, we also had Tupac and Biggie. Yeah, he was dead before he Jay started listening to him. Well, he died when you were five. <laughs> 
and the biggie died when you were six. So, yeah, I would imagine so. I can't imagine you running around the house at the age of five, you know, thumping some fucking Tupac. I don't think no. that's going to work. My mom would have had a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I kid, my mom still listens to classic country. And it was classic country back then. Yeah, it's not all that bad. Yeah, it is. I was sat in the full moon with my dog drinking a beer. Oh, please. You don't complain when I play <laughs> prime country. It depends on what's on. Some of it I do. Some of it I complain about. Right. Now, if the Statler brothers come on, I'm okay with that. Who? St- exactly. <laughs> the Statler brothers. That's who my grandparents listen to. No the idea. Statler brothers. No idea. But yes, thank you to everybody. Thank you, patrons. Yes, you guys thank you, rock. guys. Uh, this will also be available on YouTube as you're listening to it. So please remember, we want to grow the YouTube channel. Yep. So even if you don't intend to watch the videos regularly on YouTube, subscribe for us. We would super greatly appreciate it to, so YouTube can show us a little love. And as long as Meester's actually got the video up. I will. Now that I, now that I can do it, I will. It'll be great. I'll check it tomorrow, see if it's up. Well, it's not going to be up tomorrow. No. To- this doesn't come out until Tuesday. Yeah, tomorrow. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> I'll e- I will even include, check this out, I will change my show notes template to include the link to the fucking YouTube video every Ooh, episode. I'll have to check for that because I don't even listen to my own damn podcast. I well, like the sound not. of my voice. You're like two books behind as far as listening. <laughs> I don't like the sound of my own voice. I, I, I however, have to listen to every episode. Yeah. So. Yeah. But anyway. Um, if you can support, if you can support the show financially, head on over to patreon.com slash ironwood. We would super appreciate it. You can do it for as little as a dollar a month. Um, if you can't do that, we would super appreciate you supporting us by a subscribing to the channel on YouTube and B leaving a rating and a review wherever you subscribe to the podcast, whether it's iTunes or Google podcasts or Stitcher or whatever. Uh, lastly, if you want to contact us. All of our information can be found on our website, iceandfirepod.com. Easiest ways are email, ironwoodarch at gmail.com. Oh, were you waiting for me to say it? Yep. Our Facebook Messenger, which is on our Facebook page, which is... At Ironwood Network? Nope. Facebook.com slash the Ironwood Network. Oh. And then you can reach to us out to us on Twitter. All three of our Twitter handles are... SEPTA. At Ice and Fire Pod. Correct. At SEPTA Ironwood. And at Mr. Ironwood. Boom. Done. We will catch you guys again on Friday in The Prophet. Until then, goodbye. Bye.